My name is Michael Lujan Bavako. I am a professor at the University of Guam. I teach Chamorro language, Chamorro culture, Guam history. I am the program coordinator for the Chamorro studies program. Okay. So um, walk me through uh, how long has this program been in the works, really? Well, the program itself has only existed for about a year and a half now. And the process of, the process of getting the program itself um, wasn't too difficult because people had really struggled over the years to bring Chamorro uh, language and Guam history into the university. I mean, um, when the university was still young, decades ago, it was, a, it, was a, it was a big challenge getting a Chamorro language class or a Guam history class because you had a lot of faculty and administrators who would say that Guam history is not real history, Chamorro language is not a real language. And so there was a lot of struggle before. Um, people like Rosa Palomo and Robert Underwood both have talked about how sort of difficult it could be at times for Chamorros and their knowledge, their language, their history to get accepted into the university because the university was a very colonial institution and it wanted to shut all of that out and not recognize that it had any value. Um, but, you know, for the past 20 years or so, the University of Guam has shifted and people have come to see UOG as a place where you can learn about those things. A lot of students, a lot of Chamorro students in particular come to UOG with the expectation that they can take a Guam history class and they can take Chamorro language as their uh, as their language um, classes and they can get that background and so because the university has shifted in its consciousness a little bit it was easier now to get this program to get this major through whereas if we had tried 50 or 60 years ago it would have been completely impossible even 30 years ago impossible but now it, it is possible because the community, in a sense, you had professors on the inside that were changing things and then the community was expecting things from the university. They were expecting that if you really are this place of knowledge and learning, you should be able to teach me what I want. I want to know more about where I come from. I want to know more about my people, my language. You should be able to do that. And so the university has responded. And the Chamorro language, Chamorro language is the most popular language here at the University of Guam for students to take. And Guam history is one of the most popular history classes to take. <laughs> now, at first, um, Peter Onodera, Dr. Dr. Evelyn Flores, and Dr. Anne Hattori, they worked together to create a minor program. And so several years ago, they were able to create a Chamorro studies minor. Um, that wasn't that, that wasn't very difficult because it's just a minor, you know, a minor doesn't really cost the university much. It's just kind of a nice frill, a nice extra thing. And then um, in 2011, we worked to get a Chamorro Studies major program. And we were successful in getting it through. Officially, the degree was offered last year, 2011, or 2012 to 2013. But um, there was no coordinator for the program. It was kind of all over the place. Um, and so nothing really happened that first year. But then this year, um, I became program coordinator and I was determined to introduce the program to the community. And so this year I have, I, I and the other faculty helped uh, organize a list of events and activities and programs for what we refer to as the Sakani and Estudian Samoro, the year of Chamorro studies. And so it started off uh, last month with a proclamation signing at Adeloupe with the, with the governor of Guam. And then right now we're, we're about to finish this week the Chamorro Experience Kifino Chamorro Lecture Series. And then we've got the ongoing Hineka Iteningui Manamku Oral History Project. And so those are a lot of the things for this semester. And next semester we'll bring with it a, a bunch of new different um, performances and activities and programs. Um, all meant to basically show the community, look at this new major, you know, and this major, you know, look at this major. We want students to sign up for this major. We want people to see it as a possibility that they can take when they're in UOG. But we also want to show the community that this is a program which is responsive to them. And so the, the, the revitalization of the Chamorro language, the collection of, of um, of the history and knowledge of our elders, these are important things for the community and so the program is already responding and trying to undertake projects to do those things. 
And so that's why I think that I think that the Chamorro Studies program is very special because it is meant to have that balance. It is meant to be sort of an academic space, but it is also meant to be a community space. And it is not a space where the academics teach the community, but it is one where the academics teach the community and the community teaches the academics. So when Robert Underwood wanted this program to be created, he said that this, in this program, you know, we have to be clear that we are not necessarily the experts. We do not know everything and we will not tell everyone how to be Chamorro or what is the only way that Chamorros do this or what is the authentic, et cetera, et cetera. He said that's not what this program is about. This program will reflect the knowledge that is in the community, but it won't, it won't validate everything that the community says but it will be about taking the knowledge in the community and using the critical resources, the intellectual resources that the university has to produce truth, to preserve knowledge, to promote things. And so, um, yeah, so we already have, a, it's, already, it's already really, really exciting, everything that we've got going for this program. <laughs> we had a, on the 24th, we did have a launch event. Itinituhuni in Estudian Tsumorogi UOG. And that was like our introduction to the UOG student population and the community. And one of the things that many people have said is, you know, a Chamorro Studies major, what would you do with a Chamorro Studies major? And so for that event, we tried to do different things. So number one, we tried to focus on how intellectually a, a degree, a major in Chamorro Studies can really help you. And so we gave, uh, people gave presentations of their research in Chamorro studies. Number two, how can you use the Chamorro language in your work? And so the main focus for that was DOE teachers, but then also GPD people came out and they spoke about how the language can be important in the workplace. And then finally, sort of Chamorro, the, the value of Chamorro studies in the community, what sort of professional options would a Chamorro studies major have? And so that's where we had people from Department of Chamorro Affairs, the Guam Museum, the Guam Visitors Bureau, um, the, the children's show Nihi, the social work program at UOG. Each of them talked about how if you have a background in Chamorro studies, it makes you better, potentially, at a job in all these fields. Because um, all this emphasis, you know, there is a lot of emphasis in making sure that sort of you know, if you learn Japanese, it makes you more employable in the tourist industry. Well, that's sure. That's true. But if you're really sort of in, but so does a background in Chamorro culture and Chamorro language. Those things are also important too. Um, I mean, GVB, you know, GV, the GVB is central, you know, GVB and the tourist industry are central in how Guam is represented. And one of the big problems in the past was that the people who represented Guam didn't really know much about Guam. Right. And so their representations were really, Guam is just like Waikiki, you know, Guam is just like everywhere else in the world. And it was no emphasis on Guam is, Guam is America, but close to Japanese people. And it was no, there was nothing really about Guam itself because the people that were doing the marketing didn't care and didn't, you know, didn't have the knowledge anyways. But um, it's been kind of pathetic to see that the tourism industry has not shifted as the Japanese tourist industry market has shifted. So all the studies, all the survey public, all the uh, tourist opinion surveys that have been conducted in the past 10 years have all pointed to tourists, tourists from Japan wanting more culture and wanting more sort of local flavor in their experience. And now the problem though is that the tourism industry is controlled primarily by sort of, I guess you could call some of them coconut chamorros and some of them clueless Japanese people who don't want to take any risks like that. They just want to no, you know, it's good if we market ourselves as Waikiki or Hawaii or, you know, who cares about those yeah. things. But what they found is that actually, you know, when you do try those things, it can actually pay big dividends. But it's, it's really slow because the tourism industry doesn't want to change. But if you do change, it can have a good impact. Um, I know this one, this, one, um, this one tour package company to Guam for years offered Chamorro ukulele and hula lessons as part of your tourism package when you come to Guam. And eventually some people here looked at that and said, what the hell is this? There's, 
this is this is Hawaiian, you know, don't do that. And they, they went to the tour company and they said, look, if you want, we can design a program where they will learn Chamorro music and dance. And then you can test it out and see if the Japanese like it. And what they found is that the Japanese really liked it and it became incredibly popular. And, you know, in, you know, and with equal popularity to the Hawaiian one. So it was kind of like, you know, anyways, there's lots of examples of that, but it kind of shows that the ability to represent Guam in a way which is grounded, which is respectful, which is close to sort of closer to this place, more intelligent, more thoughtful, all of those things can help. And that's what, you know, that's what Chamorro Studies is supposed to give you. It's supposed to make you better in the language, more knowledgeable about the culture, more knowledgeable about the history. It doesn't tell you everything, but it's meant to give you a more grounded background than your average person who goes through UOG or who goes through life. <laughs> hmm? Not knowing, those who like not knowing. Yeah, not knowing, not knowing much, not knowing anything. 